Hey everyone, are we in a super cycle? Heidi? What the heck is a super cycle? Let me tell you. Um, it's a common... <laughs> okay, so a super cycle is what can happen for an economy, for different commodities or assets or stocks, where basically there is a much larger growth either in the industry or in demand for that commodity that leads to increased prices sustained over longer periods of time than the normal cycle that you see uh, within that economy or that commodity. So what everyone is saying with you know, all the hype of the Bitcoin spot ETFs and the handful of the huge institutional investors that are trying to get their hands on Bitcoin, uh, it's lending itself to this narrative of the super cycle, which for those of you who are around since the last cycle in 2021, that one was floated out and we soon realized it was not a super cycle because right on schedule with a four, roughly with a four year cycle of Bitcoin, we saw a bear market. But what is really important to understand the difference between Bitcoin specifically and any other commodity that we've ever seen on this planet is that no matter how much demand there is for Bitcoin, no matter how many new miners join to try to mine Bitcoin, the rate of emission of Bitcoin will never change. It is according to the uh, the block rewards of that's churned out roughly every 10 minutes uh, that is hard coded in the software of Bitcoin. So Toby, how do you think that's going to play into the actual the Bitcoin cycle? And what do you think is a super cycle or what? What's going on? Well, OK, so a super cycle, it, it's... It's super. It's you have a set supply of Bitcoin, right? So you have 21 million Bitcoin. Most of the Bitcoin right now are probably not going to change hands anytime soon for a very long time. Plus, you have what's happening right now with BlackRock and spot ETFs. That's probably not going to change hands as well. Plus, I mean, I have a lot of pluses here. We have uh, a halving cycle coming up as well. So the emission rate is going to decrease mm -hmm. and the hash rate is only going to increase, which is going to increase the amount of people wanting to get into Bitcoin and as well as a ridiculous amount of currency printing by central banks around the world, which is going to only increase the price of Bitcoin over the long run. So, yeah, we're going to have little corrections or whatever. In my opinion, they're little. Whether it's 60%, 70% maybe, but the bears are going to be suffering the law of diminishing returns because the more money that's poured into this space. So say, for instance, Bitcoin goes to $10 trillion by the end of this bull cycle. Well, you know, that's that's pretty huge, you know, that to go down 70% from there, that's $7 trillion gone. I don't think that's really going to happen, uh, especially after this cycle. Um, but I could be wrong for sure. But over the long run, quit looking at it, even a four-year cycle. If you span out, uh, what, 20 years from now, I bet you you're not, owing, not going to see very much downside targets because currencies are just going to be printed to, to oblivion. There's no stopping that. These are debt-based instru instruments like the euro, the, the yen, the U.S. dollar. They're all debt-based. They have they survive. That's their lifeline is debt. So, so And that's never going to go away. So it's kind of like real estate. Real estate, if you kind of spread a long timeline of 20 years from now uh, and like 20 years ago and 20 years from now, you'll see that it's pretty much going straight up almost. Yeah, you have corrections or whatever, but those cor corrections are minuscule compared to the prices that they're going up. So I think there's a really good question to ask here too, is that um, it, right in line with this super cycle narrative is also this general understanding from those who, who are familiar with how markets work, is that as these more trillions of dollars enter the Bitcoin market, the less volatile Bitcoin will be in the future because sure. it takes more money to manipulate the price. Yes. So uh, Bitcoin's decreased volatility can still happen within a super cycle. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. Like I, yeah. I think the, the volatility will definitely decrease big time with Bitcoin. 
uh, because, you know, $10 trillion, yeah. that's becoming a pretty big market. So you're also saying that it sounds like you're saying that a super cycle is inevitable, whether it's from these ETFs or it's just from the realization of the fallacies of the fiat currencies. I mean, I mean, Bitcoin is a, a hedge against monetary inflation. Yeah. So you have that. I mean, it talk about the amount of currency being printed. It's absurd. And it's never going to stop. So I, I said that I say that over and over and over again. But people need to learn that because people ask, like, for instance, over here, people are like, well, why is real estate keep going up? Why does it? I don't get it. I'm like, it's because central banks are printing so much currency and banks are backstopping loans. So if you didn't have that, you know, people would would realize, well, uh, real estate's just falling on its face. But we do have that tons of currency printing and banks guaranteeing loans. So it's not if, but when. Will it happen this cycle? Who knows? So what does it actually look like when these uh, big institutional players have huge bags of Bitcoin? Can they manipulate it? And can they get away with that manipulation without us knowing about it? That'll be our next uh, Next subject. video, guys. But before we go, if you want to sign up for our legacy prices at learningcrypto.com, I would definitely recommend you checking it out. We have about 19 more days to go before we change prices on that. So hurry up. Okay, yeah. if you want to see our portfolio and market updates and all that good stuff, learningcrypto.com. Please like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.